So the Democrats want open borders. Let everybody come in. We're not going to let it happen. Today, I signed an executive order. We're going to keep families together, but the border is going to be just as tough. Chairman of the Freedom Caucus, Mark Meadows, openly fighting with Speaker Ryan, calling the leadership bill not ready for prime time. What exactly do you do in a WIP meeting? So, it sounds rough. Did you not tell Doozy that there's a dress code in the U.S. Capitol? Yeah. No jeans. What are you doing, man? Where are you doing? Hey, say it's going in. Let's bring that up. To have the president come to uh, our great state of Minnesota in the 8th Congressional District and, and really support our way of life in the rally was uh, just unbelievable. Is there anything more fun than a Trump rally? Is there, sir? He went, uh, he actually left home in order to go big. Big in Minnesota, a huge crowd. They had to swap out the venues when they saw the interest. And I was just talking to a uh, legislator that was there last night, uh, the, uh, a, a aspiring legislator who wants to win the 9th District in Minnesota. Right. Mm -hmm. He says there was a bigger crowd outside as there was inside. Mm -hmm. People just wanted to see on the, on the flat screens. And of course, oh. we saw it all here on Fox News Channel and on this Thursday morning, the first day of summer. We have a Fox News alert. Yep, uh, he wasn't here yesterday, but he's here today. We're talking about President Trump signing an executive order to stop family separations at the border, but Democrats still aren't happy in some respects. That's right. All of this is House Republicans get ready to try to tackle immigration today. A vote is presumed uh, going to happen. Griff Jenkins joins us live from the border in Hidalgo, Texas, as lawmakers are fighting over what comes next, Griff. Good morning, guys. President Trump says, if you're weak, borders like the one behind me get overrun. If you're strong, you have no heart. And it was the backlash against that family separation that caused the president to do an about face, signing that executive order on family separation. Here's what he had to say. It's about keeping families together, while at the same time, being sure that we have a very powerful, very strong border, and border security will be uh, equal if not greater than previously one minute now the ball is in congress's court we're going to have two votes today in the house the leadership bill and the conservative good lad bill it's not clear that either have any support and we had mark meadows chairman of the freedom caucus openly fighting with speaker ryan saying that the leadership bill wasn't ready for prime time but democrats meanwhile aren't supporting either bill and they are lashing out against the president's executive order senator diane feinstein of california tweeting that the executive order i'm sorry this is the statement first by House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi saying the president's order seeks to replace one form of child abuse with another instead of protecting traumatized children. The president has directed his attorney general to pave the way for the long-term incarceration of families in prison-like conditions. And of course, I apologize, I led with Feinstein's tweet where she says it's extremely troubling. And she goes on to say that it appears that this is the next step in the administration's larger agenda to eliminate basic protections for asylum seekers. An important point in the next hour, guys, I will take you inside the Adalgo Port of Entry and show you how you legally seek asylum. Oh, Back wow. to you. See that. That's and great. Yeah. Great job yesterday. We didn't have a chance to tell you, but that was a, a wonderful package at the border uh, with a Border Patrol agent. Uh, so Griff Jenkins at three minutes after the hour. Let's expand on this. That's right. Uh, so uh, Griff was showing us what some of the uh, Democrats in Congress are suggesting. Democrats broadly want families simply to be released into the United States together while their cases are being uh, adjudicated. And what do they use for money and housing? Whatever they brought with them, presumably. I don't uh -huh. think we'd give them anything. A lean-to that comes in a package? Or, I don't well, understand. When the, president, when the president signed that executive order yesterday so saying that families are not going to be separated, I right. thought everyone would just be, oh, wonderful, that's great. But it hasn't been that way. Others are now complaining, saying that you have uh, Bernie Sanders, who is tweeting, saying merely replaces one in inhumane act with another, he, because he says being detained indefinitely is not is not right. something that um, is humane. Marco Rubio says, don't even use the word indefinitely. He said that is patently false in his tweets. He said there is a hearing, they go through the due process, and there's a new bill that's on the table to hire more judges to go and speed up this process, but at least the parents and the kids are back together in a safe place. Right, but the new bill, it's got to be passed by Congress. Uh, and we saw Mark Meadows uh, fighting with uh, Paul Ryan. 
in that video that Griff just ran, apparently, according to Capitol Hill sources, apparently uh, Mark Meadows thought there were things for the House Freedom Caucus, things they wanted in the bill. They weren't there, and he was a little upset. Uh, one other thing that we've been talking about is uh, this all started when the attorney general said, you know, we're going to go, we're going to have zero tolerance when it comes to breaking the law. The zero tolerance aspect continues to this day. It's going to, uh, they will prosecute adults who try to come into the country illegally, but what it'll do is they're going to try to keep the families together as a unit while it's being adjudicated. So they're, as we heard from the judge, they're trying to speed things up. They're trying to get more judges. And uh, the president has reached out to the Department of Defense and said, could we have some of the facilities in Texas, New Mexico, and Arkansas to make this happen? All right. So the president of the United States says, you know, it's unbelievable that we got to try to pass immigration reform uh, with Democrats who in the past were on the record supporting a lot of the things that are being proposed right now, proposed right now. The same people with just uh, uh, darker hair. Uh, president Trump actually tweeted this out. Don't worry, the Republicans and your president will fix it. So he goes at it. Meanwhile, in the past, here are the Democrats, uh, including some very familiar faces, weighing in. Our immigration system is broken. Illegal immigration is wrong, plain and simple. All Americans, not only in the states most heavily affected, but in every place in this country, are rightly disturbed by the large numbers of illegal aliens entering our country. The people who should be here are those who come legally. We have to send a clear message. Just because your child gets across the border, that doesn't mean the child gets to stay. Right. Unbelievable. So this is what the White House put out to say, do you realize what I'm dealing with? I'm dealing with people who aren't even sincerely answering or trying to solve a problem because they're on the record uh, agreeing with me. But because I'm president or Republicans are in power, they won't. Ben but Shapiro. Those are the same problems that uh, President Obama had back in the day. And that's why it wound up in court. And that's why we are where we are. What ben do you mean, uh, uh, President because Obama? Because when uh, President Obama um, was president, the... You could not keep a kid uh, incarcerated, essentially, in, uh, detained for more than 20 days. And so that's what President uh, Trump was saying. He said, look, my, tan my hands are tied. This is the, uh, what the judge had said. And that's what the Judge Napolitano said. Jeff Sessions has gone back to that original judge to say, could you extend it past 20 days? Well, it's just interesting that the left supported President, exactly. President uh, Trump's exact agenda years ago. Now they have flip-flopped, and Ben Shapiro says it is just an outcry from the left because they don't want to agree with anything that this president tries to pass. Listen. The left sort of wants it both ways. They don't want you to be able to keep the kids in prison with the parents, but they also don't want you to separate the parents from the kids, which leaves only one solution, of course, which is release the parents, which is really what they want out of this entire thing. While they're saying all of this about Nazi policy from the right, the right is actually attempting to solve this. The Democrats want to say that the policy is awful, it's evil, it's Nazi-esque, it's Japanese internment in, in 1942. It's all of those things. But we're not going to work to solve it because it's all on Trump. It seems that the left is more interested in promulgating a particular feeling about this policy than they are about solving it. And how successful is Ben Shapiro now? He's got a better set, and even he's got gel in his hair. That's how mm. successful his podcast is. But he's right on the money here again. Is there any way to win this? Besides getting 60 votes and just doing your own thing if you're Republicans, there's also a video of Harry Reid saying the outrageousness of having a lottery system to welcome people into our country. Mm. That was in, 19, in the 1990s. Now you can't He was get saying people. how outrageous the lottery yeah. system was. Right. Meanwhile, let's move on to the IG report, which the president theorizes is the reason why everyone's talking about immigration. They don't want to talk about this. Right. Uh, yesterday, it was revealed uh, during a uh, Senate uh, Intel Committee hearing that apparently Chris Steele, Christopher Steele, the guy who came up with the uh, Trump dossier, he visited the State Department back in uh, October of 2016, before the election, and actually briefed Obama officials on the dossier. And uh, Victoria Newland, who was a State Department official, said she and other officials there referred the dossier to the FBI. So they took this unverified thing that had been paid for by Hillary Clinton's campaign, and they took that to the FBI. And they had, uh, keep in mind, it's somebody from the State Department giving it to the FBI. Got a problem with that? Well, Tom Dupree is a former DOJ official, and he says these new revelations are suggesting that the State Department was more involved than anyone knew. Listen to this. 
I thought that the State Department basically said once we got wind of what was going on with this dossier, we passed it off to law enforcement. But what these new revelations suggest is that the State Department was apparently much more involved than any of us knew, that they were having meetings or getting briefings about the dossier. It's very puzzling. She yeah, also, Victoria Newland is at the center of this. She says, listen, I didn't want anything to do with that. I referred it to the FBI. He goes, really? Because in October, Senator Burr, a Republican on the Senate Intelligence Committee, who's trying to keep politics out of the investigation, but we never get their results, said, I, I didn't think you were really involved in this. He goes, yeah, I intentionally avoided the meeting that I knew nothing about. Really? So the State Department, which also okayed a meeting for Christopher Steele to meet with one of our FBI guys in Rome, was not involved, but Christopher Steele felt as though he had to brief them in October. The British spy right the who put together a dossier of 35 pages, 17 separate, 17 separate missives, and who's at the center, perhaps, of the FISA application process that allowed, uh, allowed the FBI to follow Papadopoulos and tap into Carter Page. Maybe we're getting closer to figuring this whole thing out. I wish someone would be honest, would save us a lot of money and time. Great. Right. Let's hand it over to Jillian, who has some more headlines for us. Hey, Jillian. That's right. Good morning. Let's get you caught up on some of your news of the day. Starting with this, millions of people are under the threat of severe weather as flash flooding wreaks havoc in Pennsylvania. Oh, my God, dude. I cannot even believe this right now. Neither can I. Incredible video showing a car being swept away outside Pittsburgh. Look at that. In the Midwest, tornadoes touching down. Several twisters reported in Iowa. More storms are on the way today. A hiker is found dead, killed by an aggressive bear in the woods. Police finding the body of Michael Saltis in Anchorage, Alaska. The gruesome discovery coming moments after that same bear attacked a volunteer who was looking for Saltis. Police think it was protecting the dead body. The volunteer is expected to survive. The bear is still on the loose. Well, he joined us on the couch a few months back, and now big news for actor Dennis Quaid. He said to play Ronald Reagan in a new biopic. It will explore the president's life from boyhood through his presidency. Filmmakers met with 50 of Reagan's friends, confidants, and cabinet members, even the surgeon who saved his life after he was shot. Let's look at your headlines. That's, I was that's thinking he's cool. going to have to peg his voice. Got to get that voice down, Pat. That would be the hardest thing. And his mannerisms. I think he'll be able to do it. I bet he will. He's an actor. Yep. Mm -hmm. And a good one. All right. He, he, Thanks, was, uh, he was great in Frequency. That's he when he, he won me at Frequency. That's the first time <laughs> that movie. He came <laughs> into the studio to talk to us about he that. He won you at Frequency, not at Hello. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, meanwhile, straight ahead, can the House of Representatives get an immigration bill passed through their chamber later today? We're going to talk to Congressman Mike McCall from Texas. He's next. And it's the most American prom touch you'll ever Whoa. see. And it could score the student $10,000. We'll explain because we have time and it's in the prompter. All right, get ready. House Republicans are set to tackle immigration on the floor today after the president signed an executive order stopping family separations at the border yesterday. But will lawmakers actually be able to come to an agreement? Or will they say there's no rush now that the president signed that executive order? Joining us right now is the latest that the chairman of Homeland Security has been with the president quite often, Congressman Michael McCall of Texas. Congressman, I understand, uh, first off, uh, there's a fear that there won't be a, a feeling of urgency now that the president signed the executive order allowing families to get back together. Are you worried about that, too? Well, no, I, Brian, I applaud the president signing that, but that's a temporary sort of Band-Aid measure. What we need to do is close the legal loopholes and provide a legal uh, permanent fix. And that's what our, the, the Goodlap McCall bill does. We have a permanent fix so that... Uh, when they come into the country, they're detained and removed. And uh, uh, this, is, this is one thing that uh, the secretary has been very strong about. We met with the attorney general yesterday, and the president says he's a thousand percent behind this bill. So when people cross, they could be the best people or the worst people. Uh, they are going to be either asylum seekers or the people looking to cross here illegally. Your new no tolerance, the, the, the no tolerance is you're just getting on buses and going back. Well, if you come from Mexico, uh, you are uh, detained and removed from the country. If you come from Central America, you're treated differently. Our bill treats them the same. So we detain them. We don't split the family up like uh, is currently done. We keep the family together. 
uh, and then we remove them from the country. Now, they do could have an asylum claim, but we uh, changed that standard so it's more difficult than just saying the magic words, credible fear of persecution. Understood. And then we got to have some type of DNA, so we need to make sure these are actually uh, related to these people. True. So uh, there's two bills that are going to make their way through the House. <clears throat> Can you give me the... Uh, the quick version of what they are. You got the Goodlatte McCall bill, and there's another one which we could call the president's bill that he says, I'll support both, but this is the more moderate one likely to get through. So tell me about the compromise, which is known as the president's bill. Well, they're both very similar in the sense they have my border security bill with $25 billion of funding for the president's wall. It has the four pillars that we talked about, and that also being uh, visa lottery elimination, chain migration, and a DACA fix. Uh, it's a slightly different on the DACA piece uh, where they're giving a merit-based visa they, they can apply for, but also any immigrant uh, can apply for. So I, I expect a majority of Republicans are going to vote for this bill, and we'll get, unfortunately, no Democrats supporting this, even though we have a DACA mm -hmm. fixed to it. So uh, what time will the vote be, and in what order will they be voted on? Uh, it'll be a series, uh, probably about 1 o'clock on the first bill, probably about 3 o'clock on the uh, second bill. And you know, I know it's not your division, but when it goes to the Senate, is there any hope there? Uh, you know, I would hope they would just uh, do away with their parliamentary procedure and get to a simple majority vote of 51. If they did that, they could pass the bill that hopefully we're going to pass uh, today. And real quick, is there any Democrat talk to you about solving this problem? No, I think they are completely interested in making this a campaign issue. And even though the president resolved the family separation issue on a temporary basis, they condemn him for that. Uh, I don't think they have any interest in working constructively with us, but rather use this in the 2018 midterm elections. Yeah, Senator Schumer says there's too many poison pill riders. Uh, Chairman McCall, thanks so much. Thank you, Brian. All right. Meanwhile, straight ahead, the media claimed this ICE agent's tattoo was a Nazi symbol, but it's actually his Afghanistan platoon symbol. Johnny Joey Jones met that agent after losing his legs in Afghanistan. He got a message. He's going to get a message that everyone needs to hear. It's coming up. Plus, Newt Gingrich joins us live next. And that's Newt looking the other direction. I wish you'd look at me. For your news by the numbers first 80 million dollars that's how much former new york city mayor michael bloomberg plans to spend to drive republicans out of the house democrats need to flip at least 23 seats this november to regain a majority next more than four million dollars that is how much a global warming advocacy group received a national science foundation grants a group of republican senators want an investigation to determine if those grants broke laws by funding projects to influence politics and finally ten thousand dollars that is how much a new jersey teenager that one right there could win for that patriotic prom tuxedo that is made out of duct tape he is a finalist in the duck brands stuck at prom scholarship competition steve that is very creative. Thank you, Ainsley. Meanwhile, take a look at this. A fact checker for the New Yorker magazine under fire for allegedly tweeting about an ICE agent and combat uh, wounded Marine veteran by the name of Justin Gertner. He's got a tattoo, but it's a Titan II tattoo. But the fact checker called it a Nazi symbol, an Iron Cross. But the tattoo is actually his Afghanistan platoon symbol. ICE said... Quote, anyone attempting to advance their personal political opinions by baselessly slandering an American hero should be issuing public apologies. Our next guest lost his legs in a bomb blast in Afghanistan and knew, knows Justin Gertner while recovering. Retired U.S. Marine Corps bomb technician Johnny Joey Jones joins us right now from Atlanta. Johnny, good morning to you. Good morning, Steve. Okay, so you know Justin. Uh, how was he injured? So Justin was a Marine infantryman. Uh, he was stationed in Afghanistan around the same time I was, 2010-11. Okay. And he was injured by what we call an IED, or a roadside bomb. It took both of his legs above the knee. Quite honestly, his injuries were as bad or worse than mine. And this is a young man who served his country every day of his adult life since he joined the Marine Corps. He got injured during his recovery, became a part of the Paralympics and Warrior Games, and then was recruited by ICE. And he works every single day, a full-time job, when he doesn't have to and really shouldn't have to. And uh, for them to come after him is just is disgusting. And, and today he works for ICE and he does online work. And we saw that image. 
You know, it is extraordinary that uh, the fact checker for the New Yorker had put that out, that it looked like uh, that, that particular <laughs> inappropriate symbol, but the New Yorker did apologize. Uh, and apparently the fact checker took down the tweet and said she didn't want to spread uh, disinformation, but I read somewhere that ICE would still like her to apologize. You know, I didn't even have a chance to see her tweet before I read Ron Perlman's tweet. This is a guy that played Hellboy. He was in Sons of Anarchy. He's pretty loud and boisterous on Twitter. It is what it is. But I know Ron Perlman. He's come to charity events for military a few years ago that I used to organize. And now I know that must have been for personal gain. One of the things that's being lost here is that the Iron Cross is a symbol our military uses today. Almost every branch of service has an Iron Cross badge for those that qualify with a rifle. So to even jump to that conclusion, if it is an Iron Cross tattoo, is ridiculous. It's stupid and it's looking for a way to attack people who are doing their job. And one thing Americans need to understand is that these ICE agents, that's the first attempt at compassion people crossing the border get from our country. They're not there trying to put them in handcuffs and treat them bad. Badly. They're the first ones there to offer them water and to try to figure this problem out. Those are people who volunteer to put their lives on the line for this country, just like Justin Gertner. If you have a problem with politicians, take it out with politicians. That's why they're there. But to attack these men and women the way Antifa, the way other organizations have, putting out an infographic on how to rip an ICE agent's heart out, these people are disgusting and they're too emotional to be a part of this conversation. They need to sit this one out and let the adults have the room. You mentioned Antifa. Uh, they apparently share shared the names and photos of 1,600 ICE agents online, uh, which puts, you know, puts them at peril, and that's, that's your concern. But here's the thing. It, it wasn't, you know, for the fact checker to put that out, uh, the person is a fact checker. Just contact him and say, hey, is that an iron cross? And then he would have said, no, it's a Titan II tattoo. <laughs> Well, and, that, and my point is, if it were the Iron Cross, it's not a Nazi symbol. I mean, some fact checker okay. there that took a glimpse of a tattoo and turned it into something so hateful against a warrior, someone who doesn't deserve to be in the middle of this uh, controversy that shouldn't even be, it shouldn't even exist to begin with. It's appalling. It truly is. And it exposes the emotional standpoint that so many people are coming from that has nothing to do with what's actually going on in the world. And the thing about Justin is, uh, while we're showing his image and now everybody Everybody knows he works for ICE. He's the kind of guy who never looked for a, a public profile. He's just trying to do his job. No, he keeps his nose to the grind and he works. I know Justin very well, and I'm sure he's appalled to even be in the public eye for any reason, much less something like this. Justin's the kind of guy that wants to go to work every day, not the kind of guy that wants to be in the middle of something like this. And, uh, and I hate it for him. He deserves better. This country owes him more. So does that fact checker and everyone who knows who he is. He deserves a thank you and nothing less, but certainly nothing more. Well, the fact checker did take down the tweet and the New Yorker did apologize. Let's see what else happens. Uh, Johnny, thank you very much for joining us today from Atlanta. Absolutely. Have a great morning. You as well. All right. It is 730 here in New York City. Straight ahead, an actor goes on a vulgar Twitter rampage calling for Baron Trump to be kidnapped and put in a cage. Is that okay? Newt Gingrich is going to weigh in on that coming up. Plus, what do voters think of the president's rally last night in Duluth? Todd Pyro is nearby having breakfast with friends, and he's reading the paper. And it was a real dog day at the ballpark for this baseball fan. She got a black eye from a flying hot dog. Not funny. We'll explain her story coming up. Unemployment numbers are among the best in the history of our country. For the first time in 20 years, wages are rising. We just secured a record $700 billion in funding to rebuild our military. We've cut more regulations in 500 days than any president. Make America great again, and that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, that was uh, the President of the United States yesterday with a raucous rally, which almost nobody covered. We took it uh, wire to wire. All right, Tucker Carlson came in, said, here's the president. Mm -hmm. And 45 mm -hmm. minutes later, you saw Tucker again. But no other uh, network was taken. I think one took it for a minute. 
<laughs> yeah, I was watching Sean Hannity's show last night. I was up late, and he was when Tucker tosses to him. Tucker, he said, "You took all my ratings tonight. <laughs> Everyone was watching your show." <laughs> all right. Well, everybody's watching this show because they know that Newt Gingrich, Fox News contributor, former Speaker of the House, and the guy who ran for president, and he's got a book out called Trump's America, joins us live from the Washington D.C. area. Uh, Mr. Speaker, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. So what do you make? Well, um, by the way, yes, it sir? should. It, well, let me just say it should say something to people that Trump was in Duluth, Minnesota, an area that would have been historically thought of as not touchable by Republicans. And there's a real chance as the Democratic Party runs to the left uh, that you're going to see Minnesota become one of the really bright spots for the Republican Party this fall with Tim Pawlenty getting reelected as governor, probably picking up at least two House seats and I think maybe winning a U.S. Senate seat. So. Uh, that's something nobody could have predicted five years he ago. He said yeah. last night that Hillary Clinton narrowly won in 2016, and he said he thinks I will. He said I predict I will win in 2020. Do you think that'll happen? Yes, I think he'll win in 2020, and I think he'll have a Republican governor helping him, and I think he will have increased the Republican delegation. Right. There can't be a blue wave in this country if we're winning in Minnesota. Hey, uh, I mean, new let's just be clear about what's going on. Right. He felt a couple more visits. Yes, he would sir. have had it last time. Uh, Mr. Speaker, you did point out that uh, the optics on this whole immigration issue were terrible, that Ronald Reagan would have picked up the first time he saw a sure. child crying on television. He would have acted. Uh, how much damage was done to the president through this, whether it was deserved or undeserved, optics matter. What do you think? Look, I think, I think it hurt him briefly. I think he figured out that there was not a sustainable policy. He signed an executive order. Oddly enough, the very Democrats who wanted him to act came back immediately and didn't like the fact that he acted. Uh, but, but the president has the right position, which is, yes, we want to keep children with, with their families, but we also want to control the border. The Democrats want to use the children as an excuse to go to an open border where tens of millions of people could flood into the U.S. Remember, there's been a huge increase because of the cartels right. and because of the Mexican government. There's been an enormous increase in the number of people coming out of Central America. And even the Obama administration right. had a zero tolerance policy. And you can find quote after quote of the Obama administration leadership saying, we're not gonna let people come across the border illegally. Right, and so uh, the president signed the executive order and what it does is it asks the attorney general to try to modify the court order. Uh, th this is the same battle that the Obama administration fought and lost when they tried to jail families for more than 20 days. The judge said, you just can't do that. And that's what brings us to today. And uh, you just mentioned the former president and some of his quotes, we've got one from Facebook. This is uh, President Obama. He wrote, to watch those families broken apart in real time puts to us a very simple question. Are we a nation that accepts the cruelty of ripping children from their parents' arms, or are we a nation that values families and works to keep them together? Do we look away, or do we choose to see something of ourselves and our children? I think he was talking about National Refugee Day there. But it was, was he referring to this policy in particular? It came but out was. National Refugee okay. Day. Well, What's your reaction? It, look, it's his administration, his administration in response to a huge increase in the number of people coming out of Central America and the deliberate development by the drug cartels of human trafficking on a large scale, his administration announced a zero tolerance policy. I mean, he should have talked to his Homeland Security uh, secretary. Uh, so there's a certain amount of, of really remarkable hypocrisy on the left right now. And uh, no indication, by the way, that Chuck Schumer, for example, the Democratic leader, has any interest in fixing the law to help these children. He just wants to attack. And by the way, the Democrats introduced a bill, and all of them co-sponsored it, so badly written that it will be a major liability in the campaign this fall because it basically provides for open borders and all of the Democrats up for re-election co-sponsored it, none of them will be able to defend it. But yeah, Newt, if, if something comes out of the House and moves to the Senate and it has some sort of protection for the dreamers, wouldn't that be hard for the Democrats not to vote for? No. The Democrats will say, if it has the wall in it, we won't vote for it. Look, the level of dishonesty and the level of just brutal partisanship we're now living through uh, is exactly what you get 
when you have this scale of change in the political structure. These were all Democrats who were prepared to work with Hillary Clinton, who are now prepared to fight literally all the way to the end against uh, Donald Trump. No matter what Trump does, they're going to attack him mm. for it. Uh, and they're going to try to avoid helping. I think it's going to cost them six to eight seats in the Senate by the time this is over this fall. That would be that would be put them over. Uh, that would put them right around 60. And new to there's two measures going to be working their way through the House today. Will any of them get? Will either one of them get through? Maybe. I, I think it, it depends. I think there's real anger in the House right now. There's a real sense that this thing is totally messed up. There's a sense of, of really worrying about what the Senate will do or not do. I mean, I, had a, I was up on the Hill yesterday talking to members, and several said to me, look, I'm willing to vote for this, and I'm going to get beaten up by, by uh, anti-immigrant activists for, for even having anything in here that's positive about immigration, even though it does include the wall. They said what really gets to me is if I take this hard vote and then the Senate does nothing, he said, well, I'm yeah. getting beaten up for having achieved nothing. Right. And I think that's a real problem. And uh, I th again, I want to come back to the real debate in this country is simple. Do you think the United States has the right to have a border that it protects? Or do you think we should have open borders and have 20 or 30 or 40 million people come here uh, without any kind of vetting, without any kind right. of looking at who they are? Obviously, there are Democrats who believe they ought to have open borders. We ought to have that straight up debate as a country. Yeah, you know? Nancy Pelosi and with make, homeless. Make it very clear. This is the real choice. And Nancy Pelosi with homeless everywhere says basically let everybody in. They're going to uh, take the votes this afternoon. Let's see what they do. Newt, thank right. you very much. Thanks so much. All right, let's hand it over to Jillian. She has some breaking news for us. That's Thanks. Right. Some news that we're just getting in right now. So let's get you caught up on this Fox News alert. Just moments ago, police arresting the wife of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Sarah Netanyahu is charged with fraud and breach of trust. She's accused of misusing over $100,000 in official funds for catering services. Meantime, Prime Minister Netanyahu faces investigations into alleged corruption. He denies any wrongdoing and calls the allegations against him and his wife a media witch hunt. The body of a missing man discovered badly burned by firefighters. Now his accused killer is under investigation by ICE. Ernesto Esquival Garcia is accused of killing Jared Vargas, then setting his body on fire inside a Texas apartment. Police say the men worked together, but a motive is still unclear. The suspect is in jail. His legal status is unknown. Caught on camera, an off-duty officer hijacking the plans of two carjackers in Chicago. The suspects trying to steal the officer's personal car while he was sitting in it before leaving for a haircut. That's when the cop jumped out of the vehicle and opened fire, starting a shootout with one of the suspects. Police are still searching for the men who ran off. Incredibly, though, no one was hurt. A woman has a black eye after getting hit in the face by a flying hot dog. You heard me. The Philadelphia Phillies hot dog cannon coming in a little too hot at a game, launching a hot dog wrapped in duct tape right at Kathy McKeevy. It just came so fast and it just hit me like that. I understand a baseball, but not a hot dog. Okay, so she was rushed to the hospital, but will be okay. The team offered her free tickets. I, I've met the Philly fanatic multiple times. Right. Very nice. Whatever he is, Mesca. I'm sure he did not mean it. Why was the hot dog wrapped in duct tape? tape. Because, well, in order for oh. the hot dog to go flying, like, you don't want it to come apart as it's in the air. I it's really it. weird. They're <laughs> launching hot dogs wrapped in duct tape to the crowd. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot of Usually places Usually they launch those t-shirts. No, yeah. a lot of places do. Like Dollar Dog Night? You don't always should shoot uh, soft stuff at people. <laughs> Typically, one would think a hot dog is soft, but... All right. All right, I rest my case. By the way, speaking of refreshments and things to eat, uh, we're actually going to have the Dairy Queen people here at the end of the show with free blizzards. Yum. First day of summer. All right, it is 43 minutes after the top of the hour. Coming up, one city held a prayer vigil for victims of a drive-by shooting, but a judge ruled that violated the First Amendment. Really? This morning, the mayor is fighting back. Plus, what do voters think of the president's rally last night? Ty Pyro is having breakfast with them. He's in Duluth. All right, so you saw the president. He was last night on our air 12 hours ago in Duluth, Minnesota, at a big arena one mile from Uncle Louie's Cafe. Which is where Todd Pyro is live this morning having breakfast with friends. Hey, Todd. 
Hey guys, good morning to all of you. Obviously, the number one issue that everybody is talking about these days is immigration. And so, figure let's have an immigration roundtable, getting the thoughts of the Minnesota voter, specifically the Duluth, Minnesota voter. Going to begin with Tim. Tim is a salesman. Uh, he voted for the president. And according to you, you told me earlier, Trump understands the meaning of sovereignty better than any other president. Why do you say that? Well, I, I say that because, you know, he is trying to protect our borders. He says over and over again with a country without borders no longer exists and our past presidents have allowed the immigration the illegal aliens to come across the the border and in, in record numbers we're you know we're keep growing at a rate that is unsustainable and so you know we need to have secure borders and let in only those who we wish to let in Tim thank you for your time Tina ran a women's health center and she did not vote for President Trump. She feels currently not enough compassion is being shown at the border, and she wants a bipartisan solution. Yes, I'd like a bipartisan solution, and what bothers me about the border is that I feel we're not really addressing the issue. And the issue is this country was built on immigration. I think we need to be very careful of the vetting that we do on people, but I also believe that compassion can always be there, and I felt that that has been missing. Quickly, do you feel Democrats should come up with their own plan? I think it has to be bipartisan. Okay. Strongly. Tina, thank you very much for your time. Mike? Mike works in marketing, voted for President Trump, says uh, we need a wall. We do, because a country without borders, like Tim says, isn't a country. We have to have our borders set up in such a way that we keep the people out who are going to do us harm. We've seen time and time again that the people, the people coming in commit crimes. Um, and as far as the compassion thing, President, President Trump just signed an executive order keeping the families together. My feeling is, good, okay. send the whole family back. Understood. I want to get Linda before we go. Linda's an interior designer, voted for President Trump, says uh, it feels horrible for the kids, but the laws need to be followed. Exactly. I think the kids are the pawns in this whole matter. And I think the parents should have been more thoughtful about their children before they sent them over the border or took them over the border. And I like the executive order that President Trump just signed, but all the children need to go back with the parents. Should we reform legal immigration? That's a difficult question. I'm, I'm not really sure. Okay. Uh, obviously, as you've seen just from our balance roundtable here and through the discussions in the nation, this is a tough issue. And the nation wants to show compassion. Certainly, we hope our representatives in Congress can come up with a solution. Back to you in New York. All right. Todd Pyro live in Duluth with the latest, the fair and balanced mm -hmm. breakfast. Uh, I'm sure that. Congress won't let us down. They never have. <laughs> yeah, good one. <laughs> All right. Uh, meanwhile, coming up, one city held a prayer vigil for victims of drive-by shooting, but a judge ruled that prayer vigil violated the First Amendment. This morning, the mayor fighting back. He's live in our studio. Plus, you know him, uh, you love him as Superman. Oh, one more thing. If you ever need to find me, all you have to do is look up. Uh, now Dean Kane is trading in his cape for a badge, joining us in his brand new uniform. That's coming up straight ahead. It is a fight for faith. A federal judge ruling that the city of Ocala, Florida, violated the First Amendment by holding a prayer vigil back in 2014 in response to kids being shot in a drive-by shooting. But the city is fighting back and now challenging that ruling. Joining me now to explain is the mayor of Ocala, Florida, uh, Mayor Kent Gwynn. Mayor, thanks for being with us. Thanks, Ansley. Thanks so for letting us, me be here you're today. You're welcome. Tell us what happened in 2014. Okay, so 2014, there was a drive-by shooting. Two little children children were shot. Uh, our chief uh, went to the uh, NAACP and asked them, you know, help us help you and, and, and find out, you know, uh, are there people that know about this and uh, what should we do? And they said, you know, why don't we have a prayer vigil? So we said, you know, that's great. We put a, put a, uh, a letter on police letterhead on Facebook. We asked the community to pray. Hundreds showed up, right? 
five or 600 people showed up uh, and it was great. You know, we wanted to pray for two things, A, for the children that mm -hmm. got shot in the drive-by shooting. And secondly, that people that knew who this was, that they would have the courage to come, forward. to come out and say, hey, this is who did it. So there were some atheists there that were not happy. There were some atheists there that weren't happy, and uh, they, um, you know, ended up suing us uh, probably about a month later. And this has been going on for four years. So what happens now? So what happens now is the judge made a ruling. I didn't know about this uh, until after the fact. But once I knew about it, I said, I think this is great. We should do it. Uh, the chief, um, his his uh, ruling was uh, they ruled against him. They were saying that uh, he violated uh, the First Amendment and the Establishment Clause uh, by asking the community to mm -hmm. pray. So I was vac I was uh, uh, exonerated and found, you know, I wasn't involved in it. So what we're doing now is the, uh, the city is asking the appellate court to vacate the judge's ruling. What so, are the chances of that happening? Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. That's when why does they that have happen? Do you know? Courts and judges. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. There was some rulings in, the, in that appellate district uh, that were favorable to us just two weeks ago. Okay. And that's one of the reasons I mean, that we're prayer. doing It's prayer for kids. It's right. prayer for their families. It's peaceful. Sure. Well, keep us posted, please. Thank you so much for coming up from Florida to talk about All right. the story. Thank God you. bless you. Thanks. Appreciate it. We are hours away from two huge votes on immigration, but the media is too focused on bashing President Trump's new executive order.